Pulitzer Prize nominee and UNC Chapel Hill alumnus Frank Bruni has been a reporter for the New York Times for 15 years. His best-selling book, Born Round, recounts, recounts his five and a half years as the paper's restaurant critic and his lifelong struggle with food. David Hupper recently sat down with Mr. Bruni, who was in Chapel Hill for the first time since graduating in 1986. Welcome back to North Carolina. Thanks a lot. So you grew up outside of New York City and you decided to come to Carolina in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Moorhead Scholar. Right. What led to that decision? Well, it was when I was offered the Moorhead Scholarship. I went to a, uh, to a private school outside of Hartford, Connecticut, actually, um, at that point in time. And they were one of the schools that got to nominate people for the Moorhead Scholarship every year. So I was one of the two seniors they nominated. Okay. Then I got the scholarship and it was a hard thing to pass up. So you get to UNC, you decide Journalism's of interest, work at the Daily Tar Heel, mm -hmm. graduate, one thing leads to another, job at the New York Times. Well, I, uh, um, I kind of really fell into journalism more than planned it, and it was largely because I was working at the Daily Tar Heel, spending a lot of my time doing that. I was an English major at UNC, um, but as graduation approached, I had to figure out what to do for a living, and I thought, well, they pay people to do this kind of thing I've been doing at the Daily Tar Heel, so maybe I'll do that. Um, and I just, uh, I just kind of followed a fairly logical path of trading smaller jobs for bigger jobs. I started out at the New York Post for a year and a half, uh, which was a big paper, but a kind of odd sort of job. And then I went to the Detroit Free Press. And at the Detroit Free Press, I, I did some very attention-getting work as it happened. I was lucky to have some good opportunities, and I guess I did well with them. And the New York Times came calling, and I've been there for 15 years now. If you can explain some of your adventures maybe that you had with the Times. My little brother um, often tells me I don't have a career, I have an attention deficit disorder, which I think has a lot of truth to it. I, um, I started out at the Times actually as a religion reporter for the Metropolitan Pages, and that lasted about two months. Um, I subsequently um, moved to Washington. I covered politics for a while. I covered George W. Bush's um, 2000 presidential campaign. Um, shortly after that, I went to Rome for the Times for a couple of years. I covered Italy and Greece and the Vatican and would occasionally parachute into the Middle East to help out there, when, uh, in Israel actually, um, when they needed extra hands there. Um, and then one day I got a call and they said, how would you feel about maybe uh, being the restaurant critic? Um, and I loved restaurants, I loved foods, and I thought if they're willing to take a chance on me, I'll take a chance on it. I did that for five and a half years. Um, and so, yeah, it's been all over the place. But when I, when I went into journalism, my goal was to have um, as many adventures as I could. I thought journalism was a great passport into all sorts of situations. And I said to myself, I want to use that passport in as many ways as I can. And that's what I've done. And it's interesting that you were all over all different sections of the newspaper without, it seems like, a lot of experience in that particular area. So a lot, not a lot of foreign international reporting. And you're the Rome bureau chief. And then, uh, which leads into not a lot of food writing experience, and you get that offer, which you call the ultimate dare. The book, Born Round, is a memoir. It's, an, it, it's, a, it's a food memoir of a very different kind. It's, it's about not only the, the joy of eating, but the, um, the terror of eating. It's about my very unusual relationship with food. So when I was offered the job of restaurant critic, it was a really loaded moment. Um, because I had, I had had a lot of uh, trouble regulating, managing my eating during my life, and this was like kind of going directly into the belly of the beast. But by the time I got that offer, I had, I felt, um, made a lot of progress in my relationship with food, so it was, it was the test of whether I was correct or not. Was I going to, you know, once again balloon up to 280 pounds, or had I really gotten the best of that? What kind of progress do you think you had made? What, what did that look like to you? I used to be all about extremes of food. I used to go on extreme diets, and I used to go on extraordinary binges. Um, and to me, there was never any such thing as, as moderation or, sensi or your sensible eating. I either, I either had a day when I was super virtuous in my own mind and ate next to nothing, or I had a day when I was super bad and ate everything that came in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, progress was I no longer uh, believed in fad diets. I no longer put myself through those sorts of extreme paces. Um, but uh, the flip side of the coin is I, I, didn't give, I, didn't, I didn't fall prey to the sorts of amazing binges I had. So progress was stability. When I was offered the restaurant critic job, they said, uh-oh, what are you doing? You're going to Italy, the food's so great. Right. You know, right. it's going to be too much temptation. It's going to be a relapse. Um, Italy, in fact, was the perfect place to, to try to maintain your weight and to develop a new relationship with food because it, it's a place that's about 
quality and not quantity. You know, uh, it's a place that makes you realize that where we so often go wrong in American culture is with portions. They don't have the big gulp in Italy. They don't have uh, supersized meals. They don't have all-you-can-eat buffets. To an Italian, the, the notion that eating all you can possibly eat is a joy and a virtue, I mean, that, that wouldn't compute. So you were still able to really enjoy food and really Absolutely. love food. It's yeah. just uh, portion size and exercise. Which we I know are, we are crazy. I was, just, um, I was just at a luncheon with a... Um, a number of therapists who work with eating disorders and other people who also are concerned with, for instance, the obesity epidemic. Um, and there was a man from Holland there. Holland, they have fewer, uh, they have a much lower obesity rate. And I said, what, uh, what do you see as different about America that explains our problem with this? And he said, the first thing out of his mouth was portion size. Mm -hmm. um, and it really, really is true. Um, we, we have a, a very peculiar relationship in this country with portion size and with the notion that volume eating is good eating. Um, and I think if we could just get rid of that, it would solve a lot of our problems. If I had to boil down um, what I think is important from my own example, which is just one person, you know, no, nothing's universal, mm -hmm. um, don't get panicked around food, um, don't uh, fall prey to magical thinking and extreme remedies. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, uh, we, we live in this world with all these fad diets and all these grand promises. At the end of the day, um, managing a healthy relationship with food is about the old principle of energy in, energy out. You know, don't, don't consume a whole lot more calories than you expend um, and you will maintain some measure of health. And I think in our culture there's a lot of um, magical thinking, noise, fad, diet, advertisements, all that sort of stuff that gets in the way of that. With personal experience, uh, your own personal experience, how can you kind of break through all that noise out there and kind of really identify and be aware of what's going on. I don't know, you know, I'm not a doctor and I, I, I never, nor am I a therapist, and I never pretend to have solutions that are ready-made for a lot of people. I mean, I can only tell my story. Um, and there may be um, some ideas, you know, and some remedies within my story that will work for some people. Um, but if I could, if I could urge people who are uh, in the grip of some of these problems, whether, whether the problems are severe or minor, um, if I could urge them to do one thing, it, it would be to be really honest with themselves. I think a lot of, um, a lot of the problems people have with eating uh, arise from being dishonest with themselves about what they're eating, about how well they'll diet. It's, it's a series of lies you tell yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you're just honest about, about, about your eating and, and, and what's, what's right and what you can accomplish and you're reasonable, you're going to be much better off. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for you. joining us on North Carolina Now. My pleasure. Thank you. Frank Bruni was in North Carolina last weekend for the Mind Body Solution Women's Mental Health and Wellness Conference. For information about the conference and for more information about Mr. Bruni's career and book, visit our website at unctv.org slash ncnow.